Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're listening to Guild Wars Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network. Brought to you by GoDaddy. Put your website to work while you play. Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon with Doghouse Systems. Welcome to another episode of Guild Wars Reporter. This is episode 135. I am Celeste, and as always, I am joined by the lovely Alona. Hello, tired and paxed Celeste. But I am not poxed, so that's a positive. So far. <sighs> I know. Does that mean people at PAX are healthier than your children? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> There was sanitizer everywhere, so I think that's what I can attribute it to. <laughs> that could be. Your children poxify you far more than Pax did. This is very true. <laughs> so, Alona, I know that I don't have a whole lot to talk about. Well, as far as in-game, yes. maybe. So maybe. I will graciously allow you to go first with what you did this week. You al- I always go first. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm trying to be polite. Okay. Well, last Wednesday, there was no show, as you guys know, um, or maybe if you didn't know. And what we did instead, I was joined by Saint from my guild, Mock, and we streamed the start of Guild Wars Nightfall. And that was a lot of fun. It took (laughs) a few false starts because I'm relatively new to streaming and just kind of terrible at it. I'd like to continue that, actually. I don't know whether... We actually haven't talked to you about this last. I don't know if I want to, if it should be on MMO Reporter, if I should just do it on my own channel or what have you. But I'm thinking about continuing the story of Nightfall somewhere. Sure, yeah. Also, Fungeons and Fractals, uh, Saturday, and a couple other, I think we had a couple other nights as well. This past Saturday, we did Fractals and we tried level 10. Mm. And it, we actually did not bad until the final fight of the first fractal, and we had the harpy fractal, mm. and it was agony, literally agony. Could not do it. Uh, only Hunter in our group had any agony resistance. That'll do it at all. So uh, we said, you know what? Let's just go out and do this again at level nine. <laughs> so that's what we did, and then we kicked all sorts of bum. Of course did a couple nights of guild missions once with maven once with wardens of destiny although i did them in the same week and i didn't realize that because this is the first time i've done guild missions twice in one week that you only get guild rewards like the who's it's and what's it's you get for doing them guild commendations is that oh yeah for the first time you do it regardless of which guild it's on i thought it was once per guild but no oh whoops Apparently not. So that's fine. I mean, it was still fun and and social. So Mm -hmm. I still had a good time. But I completed the gift of mastery. Yay. Yay. I had almost everything for it. I needed obsidian shards and the bloodstone shard that you buy from Miani for 200 skill points. Mm -hmm. I had all the skill points, but I needed more obby shards. Right. I, I needed about 140. I got 140 from uh, with karma. In the end, I did. I spent my karma, even though I find the ratio terrible. Wow. <laughs> with karma in the Straits of Devastation, and I still have over 3 million karma. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm a little bit closer to my legendary. I, I already have the precursor. I bought it when it was super cheap. Mm-hmm. Still more than what... I paid for it, but the prices are, I think, going to go down. So regardless, probably still going to make this one. And then whatever new ones come out, I might just try for a second one with my 3 million karma. Right, yeah. 
I get so confused by the process of all this, like where you have to, you make this recipe and this recipe and this item and maybe this recipe, but those all together make this fourth thing. And I get sort of confused by all that. So Hunter drew me a clear line of what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Hunter's calling me a martyr for spending my karma. Wow. (laughs) Thanks. But anyway, he was really helpful, even though he's making fun of me now in chat room. I'll be honest, I have like a a OneNote with spreadsheet type layout, so I know exactly what I'm missing. Uh, It's all filthy lies. Alona doesn't spend karma. I did, though. I really, really did. I PvP'd a bit, not as much as I had been previously. There's just, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Still a Dolyak. And is it just me? Or is Mesmer really low on the daily rotation? Like, it always seems to be Guardian, Engineer, and Ellie. I see those, like, all the time. <laughs> and then, one, like, almost, and Warrior. But I hardly, like, Mesmer's, like, once a week. <laughs> They're probably trying to help diversify the, the classes that people are playing. Oh. Well, I want more Mesmer, because it's, like, once a week. <laughs> and that's what I want to play as. It's all about me. Right. I defeated the Vine Wrath once. I've only been up to defeat it the one time, so so it's mm-hmm. only the one attempt. My lane failed. We succeeded. I got the rewards. I never actually saw the fight because <laughs> our, our lane did terrible. Yeah, that's basically what happened to me. I still haven't gone at it for a second attempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> well, I was talking with Hunter about that earlier today, and it's like, the maps are so populated right now. Whenever I go into Silver Waste, I seem to always catch it right at the very beginning of a cycle. Mm-hmm. And so it's one of those, do I have time for what I want to do tonight mm-hmm. to spend 45 minutes here? Yeah. So it's that. And of course, I watched the Twitch live stream at PAX South and I had a bit of a party. Yay. Yeah. Surly from the guild came over. She kind of impromptu. She was out and about anyway. She brought her tiny overlord with her. So we had tiny overlord adorableness. And I was on chat with Saint and Mira and and Hunter from the guild. And we were talking about stuff as we were watching it. And it's good times. That's nice. It's kind of like a viewing party. I dig that. We had a viewing party in separate houses for the most part. And of course, Cal was with us. Yeah, It's partly his house. He was mm-hmm. here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well there's really not much for me to talk about this week <laughs> honestly when it comes to in-game things okay we have to clarify yeah i ran around on steak and potatoes man mm-hmm. i'm slowly slowly getting towards getting that key and i think i'm gonna go ahead and keep recycling this character when it's done <laughs> just because it's such a great name <laughs> steak and potatoes man i still haven't made key roy again i might have to do that yeah, it's it's just a wonderful name. <laughs> <laughs> so what else did you do that might not be, you know... Well, I was at PAX South. Yeah, yeah. I went to the presentation and stuff like that, but... So were you in with all the other players? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I went to PAX for the whole network, I had to do several media appointments and stuff like that and the nice thing about it was that i was able to like kind of skip a lot of the cues so you're a media you're kind of a big deal barely (laughs) (laughs) and uh the thing is is that they had the media up on the mezzanine so like we needed binoculars to see what was happening on the stage it was kind of awful in that regard but it was a great experience and i was just thrilled and amazed when i saw the trailer and getting all the features explained live and in color, so to speak, was just awesome. I'm quiet because I'm jealous. Well, if you get to, you know, go to PAX East, then... Maybe. Maybe. Then you get to stand in line for probably three or four hours. (laughs) Maybe. Well, mostly I have to see if I can get a passport in time. (laughs) Because of the horrible Mm -hmm. relations the U.S. and Canada has. I have to make sure I, I have to have a passport. We're just mortal enemies. That's mortal what enemies. We need passports to travel across the border. Yeah. I think travel into Canada is blocked by uh, <laughs> some insane law. Free medical. 
pretty much. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about when we live stream and a couple of other things to go along as well. If you're confused by anything that we say during this podcast, if you're new to our show, to the network or the game. Yeah, the game in general. If Even if you are, you know, maybe you heard something on another podcast out there that you're not sure what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Send it along. We're more than happy to answer questions or to mm-hmm. help with anything at all. And all of our contact info is later on in the show. <laughs> that's how we get you to stick around. <laughs> but, you know, that's how you can Please get Please don't touch go to us. the website where it's there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so we live stream Wednesday nights at 9.30 p.m. EST, 6.30 p.m. PST at twitch.tv slash Reporter. So if you want to get in contact with us, like in the most immediate sense, come to the show. Or Twitter, realistically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast on iTunes. And please remember to rate and review us there so that people know that we're helpful. And we're exist. nice. And exist. <laughs> yeah. That's kind, of, that's kind of important. Mm-hmm. And we actually have an iTunes review. Ba ba ba. <sighs> from January 17th of this year. So we're talking current. From Raining God Zippo from the UK, and they say, as a longtime Guild Wars and Guild Wars 2 player who isn't particularly any good, I find this podcast both entertaining and informative. Both Celeste and Alona are easy to listen to and put forward their points without baffling you with science, which I find often happens with MMO podcasts. They bring a light and enjoyable take on the game with a self-deprecating and humorous style. A really good listen, and mostly just about the right length. Although each podcast seems to pass too quickly. And thanks so much for that, Raining God Zippo. That's like really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I, when I saw that there was a new one, I'm like, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. And we definitely are not a scientific podcast. So that works. No, no, science does not happen here. Nope. It's blocked. <laughs> it's blocked by the Great Wall of Canada. <laughs> yes. <laughs> where there is no science anymore. (laughs) Report from Lion's Arch. Now, I spoke about PAX a little bit, just a teenage bit. And in case you haven't heard, there's been an expansion announcement (gasps) called Heart of Thorns, which is what they've been teasing like crazy. If only any one of us had predicted this, anyone in the community. (laughs) Oh, yeah, this just comes way out of left field. Uh. Mm, Yeah, sorry, (laughs) I kind of fell flat because everybody thought it was happening. Yes, (laughs) well... It was still really nice. Much like the big reveal at the end of the last story chapter. Mm-hmm. Totally nice to hear. Yes. There was a lot of pretense uh, with trying to explain exactly what happened in the last season and what happened during the cutscene even, because it's not completely obvious. Okay. Well, it's true. It's not like spelled out, so-and-so is dead or, yes. you know... So it, you, you just get this view of like, well, we've talked about it before. If you want to hear like the whole analysis of it, you can listen to the last episode. But uh, one of the things that Mike O'Brien had said was that uh, Mordermoth has already corrupted much of the Silvari race, which was just kind of like, huh? Was it much? Do you say? He said okay. much. Uh, Colin continued with, as the fleet entered the jungle, the jungle came to life and the Silvari race began to turn against them, the pact. They heard the call of Mordermoth and many of them joined with the dragon. Within a matter of minutes, the entire pact fleet was destroyed. (sighs) There you go. Full on corruption. Well, do you think it's because as they get further west, that's what's happening? It's entirely possible they came to, you know, the heart of Maguma, presumably. That's where they are because that's further on. They describe why. So because of that, it's entirely possible that, you know, proximity is a factor. Yeah, I can see that, that proximity. But so, yeah. ah, I'm really curious what this is going to mean for player characters, though. Like, are they just going to write in that, you know, some blanket, you're special, you aren't being affected? 
well, it's not about that. It says, and many of them joined with the dragon. So maybe you're resistant. Oh, well, maybe because of, you know, by the time you're that level, they presume that, you know, you are the commander. That's also so true. So any player character would also be a commander. So that might be how they do it. Entirely possible. There's going to be some sort of workaround for all <laughs> this. So, I mean, obviously it's going to happen. And they went on to explain, quote, every major feature in the expansion yes. deck. Which, if you're looking for something that wasn't mentioned, it's probably not going I'm to happen. I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out hope. Tells you. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> I do not believe you. That I'm, you don't believe that I'm holding out hope? Well, no, no, I don't believe that your hope is well-founded. <sighs> uh, my hope is that they will still announce a new race. It is a hope. I hope. It is a hope. Yeah. This is true. Uh, so the, the main blanketing statement that was made was that a lot of this is going to be like horizontal progression. Yay. No new level cap, no new tier of armor, and uh, also no grinding. Mm-hmm. And Colin Johansson actually took to the forums to explain what their definition of grind means. Yeah. Because they got tired of people saying that things were so grindy when it doesn't fit into their particular definition. Yeah. So he defines it as, to us, grind means being required to do the same boring activity over and over again. In particular, the biggest reference we're talking about here in traditional MMOs is having to kill the same creatures over and over again to farm for levels or gear. Later on in this long post... <laughs> He says, I hope that helps a bit, but that's our philosophy and definition we're going by when we make those statements. They may not align to your definition of grind, and that's okay. We're fine with that. It's just important that you know what we mean when we make that statement so you can make decisions about how you view Guild Wars 2 and judge us by our actions and words. It was a really good post. Yes. Quite honestly, I think it, it needed to be said. You know. It does. You know, as much as there are dictionaries that give definitions of words, there are gradations or variations. So you just... Or perception of. Or perceptions, yes. To know what we mean when we say this is this. And so we're not, like, breaking our word or being hypocrites. Yeah, you just have a different idea of what we're trying to say. Yeah. And that makes things totally different. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. With that, they also announced the Heart of Maguma, which it will be a series of maps. We don't know how many, so a series of zones. And I don't know if this part is, is true for all the zones they're going to be introducing, or just a few of them, but they did mention three distinct biomes, an underground or root level, ground level, which they called Core, and the Canopy, which is going to be littered with the ruined Pact Fleet airships. And you see each of those levels in the trailer that they played. Yes. So the canopy one is just messed up. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better word. I think it's really fun. Yeah. I'm really excited about running through these. Mm -hmm. One of the things they also mentioned is that go on a journey to find Glint's legacy that was left as the story of Gilders one concluded. You say here, AKA the baby, probably. probably. I've yeah. also heard theories about the scepter of ore and i think i've heard that from a variety of places i can't remember every place i heard that mm. there's going to be new challenges solo group guild the r word as in rating wasn't used at all so anticipate it being open world that's your speculation celeste yes yeah, yeah. i have no thoughts on that either way <laughs> i guess I'm yeah it's one of those things we we know so very little that there's not too much to actually say mm -hmm. new creatures bugs I love those bug creatures. And right? a lot of the ones that are, they're dragon-esque. They're not really dragons, but, you know, they're like part dragon, part dinosaur, mm -hmm. Guillermo del Toro mashups. Yeah. I see a lot of Guillermo del Toro in those. Yeah. As soon as I saw them, I was like, del Toro? <laughs> Is that who they hired? Yeah. It looks, well, it looks really cool. That's for, like, I got quite a, uh, what are they called in Pacific Rim? Kaiju. Mm -hmm. vibe off of some of them and new civilizations and you said hylic but i think it's hecate not hylic huh 
frog people in any event, and the Mersat, yeah. and I'm also not entirely convinced it's Mersat. You know, and it's crazy because I had talked to someone and they didn't actually say that it was the Mersat, and that made me really sad. I have a bit of a theory about this, and I'm just going to go out and say it right now. Mm-hmm. And I actually saw someone had a somewhat similar theory on Reddit, which I thought was kind of cool as well. So to me, they look a little bit more Marganite like but obviously the colors aren't right, and they're not in the right mm-hmm. area. They're in the Marganite area. But what if Marganites and Mersat were linked at some point? How? Well, just like, how do we know they weren't the same race at one point? Because the Marganites' origin story is that they were a tribe that would sail the sea that was the Crystal Desert. Yes, but who's to say they weren't from the same race? Because a tribe is Mers- a tribe is not a race. But why would the Mersat need boats? They glide over water. When, well, in any event, I don't know. In Guild Wars One, they couldn't break <laughs> land at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking, like that, they do look a little bit more Marganite-y to me. But the color is different and. Marganites were attached to Abaddon, so he's gone. Cromir is in that realm. Her mm-hmm. color is definitely more golden, lighter. I don't know. I just have this, I'm getting a Marganite-y but not Abaddon version vibe. Mm-hmm. But I, okay. I could be completely out to lunch on that, and it's just straight up Mersat and call it a day. But, you know, whatevs. There's certainly a lot that indicates Mersat, but there has not been confirmation. Yeah. We'll say that much. And also, um, they were specifically listed as new allies, which I thought was interesting. Yes. That's, <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm so glad they're going to be a new ally. And he says, like, oh, really? Allies, huh? <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. By the time the episode is out, that's going to be out, too. So I guess I can talk that I had a, an interview with Colin Johansson, and that's who I'm talking about. This That question was not on camera. Oh. Hunter said he tried to sink the Marganite nonsense to, to get it out of me, but I'm still still kind of going with it. I'm laughing at Em's comment about the Marganite. <laughs> a loverly rayon silk blend. Sure, to keep him interested. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. It takes all your gossamer scraps. Yes. <laughs> or Damask. Let's move along towards the mastery system, which is also one of the crazy things that was introduced. And it kind of turns all of the traits and everything else that you've been focusing on at level 80 to be on its head. Because it's an account-based PvE quote endgame progression system, and it's available to every character that you have above level 80. I love that so much. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There, we're done. Show's over. Yeah. So you earn mastery points by completing the objectives in the jungle, and that earns you skills exclusive to the heart of Maguma areas. I'm not sure. I need to see how that plays out. I went back and listened to it, and I think that's what he was saying specifically, but I'm not 100% sure on all of mastery is based there, you know? It works kind of similar to the way that collections and achievements go now, and they're going to be completely retroactive so you could log in the day of launch and you may be bloop, 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 have like 50 mastery points or something like that depending on well how much you've played well so it's like when the collections came in like you might have almost ha- had completely completed collections because mm-hmm. they were retro so that's cool yes you can spend these mastery points on each character that is level 80 So you have a note here, I was just going to steal your thunder, but it's like very akin to the current Wovwov points. So how you get your points in World vs. World, and you can spend them individually on each character. So Yeah, which is really handy. So if you've got a character that you know is not going to be running around the canopy all the time, (laughs) you don't need to specialize in the new mode of transportation, hang gliding. Now, did we find out whether mastery points are refundable? Or once you spend them, you've spent them on that character that way. I would think that there would be a reset of some kind. Okay. Because traits, I mean... That's true. Yeah, this is an extension of that system. Exactly. Yep. So the other thing about the hand gliding is that it's only going to be available in the expansion zones. They don't want you to break maps. 
everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first thing I was thinking. Like, woo, look where we can go. Oh, oh. dream crushed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The traits are also going to be reworked the way that we unlock traits currently on the new characters. So all of that is going to be changed after release or launch of this as well. So um, Colin went to the forums and said, in doing so, we're going to be removing the current trait unlocking system currently on live and replacing it with a more simplified system that supports where skills, traits, and specializations are going in the future. The new system hasn't been around that long, so... It kind of feels like a 180. Yeah. Like, I'm just wondering... To be fair, I have not made a new character. Well, okay, I did make Sad Half Jump McGee, but then I used a bunch of tomes and whatnot got him to level 40 and i'm not sure if i'm gonna keep him because <laughs> i got i was like wow i have to really work to unlock these things <laughs> yeah they're not exactly easy <laughs> so i'm like i'm intrigued by what's going to happen here yeah one of the other things that you can do with your mastery points is to learn new languages that you'll find within the jungle it's so exciting uh, you'll learn history of other cultures and be able to access hidden locations that people who haven't specced into that won't be able to see. You know what this reminds me of a little bit, just a tiny bit, like some of the early uh, missions and quests in Nightfall. You're looking at the symbols on the mm -hmm. ruins and you don't know what they are and you have to translate them. And that's how you find out about Abaddon. Right. Yeah, It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. A bit, yeah. O obviously more formalized into a, yeah. a system, but just taking elements of that. Yeah, I think they see a lot of really good ideas that they had with Goers 1, and they're just sort of bringing it further and, mm -hmm. like, progressing it and advancing the system so that everything works well and is really what they wanted to do in Goers 1, but couldn't. Yes. Well, they've yeah, they've said that many times, I think. Yeah. They also said that these skills that you would learn with your masteries are essential in order to complete the upcoming challenges in the Heart of Maguma. So it's something that you're you're absolutely going to need to to spec into these. It's not a joke. Or I like how the abbreviation says THOM. <laughs> yeah, like Tom the Brawler, oh. right? That was the, the hero. That is right. Oh, they're a clever bunch. <laughs> There's also going to be the amazing advancement of we're finally going to be getting precursor, quote, crafting. Yay! Oh! <laughs> nice noise. <laughs> Which, I already have my precursor, but, I mean, this is amazing. It's been two years since they talked to us about this. And like I said, like, I have one of the cheapest precursors that you can buy. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue with this one. But, you know, if I have the ability to go on an epic quest and journey and work towards a second one, yay! Like, why wouldn't I? Yeah. Absolutely. I still held out hope that the minstrel's going to get footfalls. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the one I'm going for. <laughs> right. You know, I'm probably going to end up doing it and figuring out, you know, which of the new legendaries I would like to get done. Because if it's a legendary that I really like and not just one that I think looks kind of cool, which is what I'm going for now with Frenzy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I would be gung-ho with trying to do these. So I'm... Really pumped for new legendary skins. <laughs> and we don't have a release date yet. So it's not like, you know, tomorrow we're going to oh, have yeah, to, yeah. oh, crap, now I have to try collect things for a second legendary, even if I've managed to finish my first. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. They also talked about specializations, which they're mod a modification to your current profession. So down another skill tree. So... That was just my way of phrasing it, so it's oh, okay. kind of, like, clearer in my head. I thought the way you phrased that, it was like, maybe you got further intel. <laughs> mm -mm. No. So one new specialization per profession for Heart of Thorns, along with one new weapon. So do we know whether those are intrinsically tied, or, like, can you only be that specialization with said weapon, or can you be the specialization with any weapon and use that weapon without using the specialization? Do we know? Unknown. Unknown. So the an examples that were given were Ranger becoming a staff-wielding druid or a necro-using greatsword. Yeah. So a new heal skill, new elite skill, new set of utility skills, modification and changes to the F skills, which I find fascinating, and a new trait line. So, eee. Yeah, it's pretty awesome looking. 
When you specialize to be an X, the previous trait line will be unavailable to you. And the speculation is that most likely marksmanship for the druid. Well, because you're taking away the bow, so... Yes, that totally makes sense. And it is swappable out of combat. Mm -hmm. Have we heard that elsewhere? Or just... Just in the interview? No, I think it was said somewhere else. Or in another interview as well. Okay. Speculative based on the trailer. Engineers using flying turrets and hammers. Um, And you have a note here say that the media packet that you received, <laughs> yeah. the picture is labeled as being an engineer with a hammer. So not so much yeah. speculation anymore. Uh, mesmer with a shield offhand. That's it's totally a mesmer. <laughs> Plus, is that sword that she's using in game already? Um, not sure. Because if it is, I need it. Because I was like, wow, that's a nice sword. I really like the patterning on it. I thought it was mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah. I pause to wonder if perhaps Revenant will have a specialization available at launch as well. It has to. They would launch it with the profession with the specialization. Gosh, it- I wonder what the heck the specialization would even be. I don't know. I, I just actually, just before the show, watched the very end of WP's most recent show, and he mentioned maybe ritualist, like a, a more closely mm-hmm. ritualist and calling it that even. I don't know. But I, I have no idea. Hmm. And I never saw his earlier. I was upstairs and like Cal was watching. So I was like, are you watching Wooden Potatoes without me? He was like, yes. <laughs> like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> yeah. So we just spoke about the new profession, Revenant. Mm-hmm. It is the third heavy profession finally that i said would bookend things nicely yep so now we have three of everything yes which totally makes sense and it's like a dark magic profession yep ritlock is the first revenant that we'll see and this happens after him spending tons of time in the mist and chasing after sahathan or sahathin i never know the pronunciation of that i seriously should figure that out i think it's sahathan they say, Sahathan. I'm pretty sure that's how they pronounce it in game. Sahathan. Okay. Uh, and it's basically like a heavy ritualist. He channels powers from the mists and from great legends of the past. The examples were Jealous Iron Hammer, which would give the character the power of the dwarves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which leads me towards like the utility skills. Well, not utility skills, but you know, the skills that we got in Guild Wars 1, like Breath of the Great Dwarf, stuff like that. Yes. And then the other power was Malix from Domain of Anguish, where you would get sort of a condition-based dark magic heavy. Which explains why they're seriously looking at conditions in the guild for PvE this, with this last balance patch, which we'll talk about oh, later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, the legends will affect the utility, heal, and elite skills. All of these are based through those. It's going to be Revenant City. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Somebody used to do a song like, take me down to Revenant City. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Because <laughs> it's going to be like, Revenant's everywhere when this launches. Although, I, Hunter tweeted out that he's going to hold out to play Revenant when they introduce a new race, and I'm, I'm with you on that. I may do that as well. Yeah. We'll see how awesome it is. I may give it <laughs> once it actually comes live. But mm-hmm. So... To continue on, they introduce for World vs. World new borderlands or borderland rotation. So it's going to be multi-level, much larger, auto siege like an Edge of the Mists, mm-hmm. lava pool similar to the worm tunnel that's in Edge of the Mist. So you go into one pool and you get shot out for, in a different location. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's going to be various buffs that are added as you hold on to shrines near your keep. And holding objectives will be a bigger part of victory in World vs. World. So Stone Mist won't just be turned over repeatedly all weekend. Exactly. So, so you, you'll want to actually hold on to it after you've been fighting for several hours to take it. Because it's worth more to you that way. You just won't have the Zerg cycle where you just kind of follow after each other. Mm-hmm. And take cap, take cap, take cap. Yeah, because that's not World vs. World. That's, you know, that's choo-choo. Choo-choo! Which, you know, sometimes after a long week at work, that's kind of relaxing. This is true. But not necessarily what they were intending, so I totally understand that. 
Yeah, uh, there's also going to be a new PvP mode called Stronghold. And you fight for supply, you hire troops, and you kill the Lord to win. So uh, he explained it as kind of like an evolution of Fort Aspenwood. Mm-hmm. And I can kind of see that. So I'm I'm kind of jazzed for it. Please explain Fort Aspenwood for those in the chat room that may not know. So for Fort Aspenwood, what happens is you have like the Kursix on one side, the Lexans on the other, and the Lexans are trying to advance to okay. breach the gates, Okay, basically. And if they breach the gates and kill the Lord, the game is over. But it's not, it wasn't a, um, like a, a group thing. You'd get thrown into a random group. And it was just, I remember it being really fun. I played through it a lot. Like when you had to get to 10,000 points. Oh, uh, I, I would always just like, I would go and I would do Fort Aspenwood and that's what I would do. I'd do that or I'd do, um. I think I've only ever done Jade Quarry. Really? I think, yes. Huh. I'm pretty sure. So that might be that. Yeah. And yes, uh, Kaladin and Chad is asking if that's a Guild Wars 1 thing. And it is. It is. It is. It was a PvP play mode that was exclusive to Kantha mm-hmm. and was kind of like how you would help move the divisions. <gasps> that's how you did it. <laughs> <laughs> there was two <laughs> factions no <idea>. in Kantha. <laughs> the Luxons and the Kurzix. And in order to move the lines and kind of shimmy through to change who had control of what cities and which guilds could hold which cities, because your guild could hold a city. Yes. In Guild Wars 1. Yes, which I always thought was very cool. That was some of the way that you could do it, was kind of playing on each different side of these PvP wars. Mm -hmm. So it was a very interesting experience. And it's one of the mechanics that it's like very early world versus world, because yes, it was... You know, it controlled the map, but it wasn't the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? World vs. World is like a huge step up from something like this, but it's like the very, you see the very beginning baby steps of it when you look at some of the mechanics in Guild Wars 1, and it's kind of what I talked about earlier. It's like they're just bringing everything forward so that it's what they really wanted it to be at the time. So it's kind of like when you watch, oh, Aliens 4, and you see the kernels of Firefly, (laughs) the characters, sort of like that. It's a progression. I'm going to say yes. You don't know what I'm talking about? No, sorry. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> so there's also going to be guild leaderboards, which are registered only from the new game mode of Stronghold. And it's a leaderboard. It This is not like the GVG that people were really hoping for, but it's a step towards that in a, a nice middle ground from what people were really hoping to get, I guess. hmm People are still excited about it, so that's the positive. Yay! Another thing that they sent, they brought forward for guilds in particular, is guild halls. And there, yes! was, there was much rejoicing. <laughs> and yes. then they ate Robin's minstrels. <laughs> so, new guild challenges and progression. It's an area for your guild to meet and socialize. And mm-hmm. it's most likely highly customizable. We didn't get a lot of detail about it. I actually forgot. I basically spent a half hour going through the trailer, pausing, like, pause, 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 like this. Right. I got a couple amazing pauses, and one of them was right at the beginning of the guild halls, and you could see the the framework at the very bottom before it starts building. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. So it it could kind of be deployed, well, like, as a CG type thing, maybe? No, no, it, it wasn't that, but it was just because... That part of the trailer was showing you how it's taking a bare, like a raw rock face okay, and yeah. put, and building in front of it. Instead of it just like magically happening, it was showing, oh, I think that's what you're saying. But like siege, when you see a siege being built, you see the steps of it being built. Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So kind of like that, like they showed like the joists and, and the framing. Yes. I very clearly in this one shot that I, I, luckily happened to pause on so i was going to send that to you so you could have it up during this part of the conversation and then i forgot whoops whoops yeah i was never anti guild hall but i was it was never like one of the i desperately need this but i'm excited that it's coming in and i'm really interested to see how they implement it i really hope it's everything that i want it to be and if it's not i will be slightly disappointed but i will also move on we never really talked about the gliding we did a bit a little bit we did during the mastery section. Oh, in that, that's, there's your mounts? Yeah, it's a mount. It's a mount. You yourself are a mount. You are under it. You're under the mountain. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. 
Now, if all of that presentation was not enough news for you, there actually was a patch on Tuesday with mostly bug fixes and balancing. It was a big download, though. Right? Why is this so huge? This is, like, a major (laughs) download. I have the feeling that there's plenty of things tucked in as little gems. That could be. For this particular update, and I'm... I don't know how I feel about that, but... (laughs) Well, I don't know how I feel about it being uncovered. I'll be honest with that. I'm not too terribly on the side of uh, downamiting. Yes. And we're going to go through a couple of things that we found were particularly interesting. There's a lot of stuff being covered here, and it's just it's too much to talk, to talk about today. Yeah, we're just gonna we're going to <laughs> glance over things we specifically had to talk about, but there's going there's obviously a lot more mm-hmm. to this, and we will have a link to the official game updates page yes so uh confusion was updated so that the effect of the condition damage and on confusion has been increased by 33 percent in pve as we skipped over the might but i think it's worth saying uh, the empowering condition damage provided by might has been reduced from 35 per stock to 30 i'm curious to see how this will play out i i mean i i never did a might stacking build so i it's honestly not something that will affect me (laughs) necessarily yeah i mean it's going to in the larger sense like in groups if you were Mm -hmm. partied with someone who had the might stacking build it's one of those unseens i might not realize how much it was benefiting me right but i'm really excited about the confusion (laughs) the login reward track is now visible from the achievement summary page inside of the hero panel and i didn't realize that this was in the patch I was just looking and I was like, man, I wonder how much longer I have to go on my little baggies because I'm not to the to 28 days yet. Mm-hmm. So well, well you've, see. you've had things on the go. Yeah. It, if I manage to actually be in my computer room, then, you know, but it was very pleasant to uh, find that it was there and I didn't know that it was going to be there. I did a little bit of digging, but it wasn't that hard to find. I'm a little surprised it's not collapsible. It should be. I am glad that they put it there, partly because it's nice. It's very um, illustrative of your progress throughout, like, mm-hmm. how many times you've logged in and how far you need to go for the next thing. And it, it, they put all that work into it, and it was like a, not a throwaway, but it was like a one-shot when you first logged in. Yeah, you log in, you click it, you click OK, and yeah. you're done. Now, granted, you only have to wait 24 hours to see it again, <laughs> thereabouts. But if you're click-happy and don't really pay attention... I'm not yeah. saying I'm like that, but I'm totally like that. So it's nice <laughs> to be able to go back and check it out when you maybe have time. Yeah, pretty much. There was an update to items and, uh, oh, <laughs> Are you just- sorry. I just found something that's interesting. They fixed a bug that allowed certain items purchased from karma vendors to be salvageable. That's a crazy bug because you've never been able to salvage like anything from a karma vendor. Certain items. I wonder which ones they were though. Right? That's kind of crazy. There was a lot of updates to different professions. Uh, A couple that stood out for me was on Elementalist. The comet radius has been increased from 120 to 180. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Which one's comet on the staff? See, now I'm trying to think, is that what I'm thinking of this? I'm thinking I'm thinking of a different skill. (laughs) My comet. (laughs) Putting you on the spot here. (laughs) I think I was thinking of meteor shower. So, but I think Comet's the same. I think it is stuff, though. See? Now I'm having to do even more research. Right on. Well, while you do that, I will talk about Mesmer. Uh, obviously, there's stuff. I think it's every profession has been touched to some extent. But Mesmer, you know, me, love Mesmer. Uh, Deception, which is the downed, the second down skill for mm-hmm. uh, Mesmer. This skill no longer requires a target in order to cast. And my note to that is, now if only they could do something with teleporting you further into danger. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm always teleporting further into danger. It's like, I'll hit number two, I can hit it. Oh, crap, I'm going to die faster. Because <laughs> it's yeah. in the middle of everything. Or at the foot of whoever's trying to kill me. And also, just a, it's an aside, if they could make number three down skill more viable... I would be so, so happy because seriously, I've only ever managed to kick that one off successfully, maybe four times ever. Oh, wow. 
so that's the one where you create a, a phantasm that will fight mm-hmm. four times ever. And it always ends, always ends with me being defeated because I should have either just been auto attacking or healing. Pretty much. Like basically as I'm like sliver away from being defeated, I managed to kick that one off because it starts with a cool down. Right. It is just so frustrating. Yeah. Uh, I'm completely wrong about Comet. It is the focus number five skill on water. (laughs) I've probably (laughs) never used it ever. But you still think it's sweet. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really glad that the the radius has been increased. (laughs) Yeah. Across the board, I'm happy with the misery changes, though, by the way. Um, Time warp, the cooldown on that skill has been reduced from 210 to 180. Yeah, and I'm wondering if maybe some of these changes, like for time warp, because, right, there's a trait that allows you to um, have time warp recharge faster, no. correct? No, there is not. Really? Nope. There isn't. There is a trait that allows glamour skills to, redu- to reduce and recharge, okay. but time warp is not a glamour skill. You can trait for all your glamour bonuses till you, the cows come home, and it will not affect time warp. And it's very frustrating. <laughs> Even though it's clearly a glamour skill. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's what I was thinking of. I was anticipating incorrectly <laughs> that this would be um, changed because of the different traits that would happen with the specialization. Obviously, I just read through these <laughs> and did a very <laughs> poor job of making my speculations on these. So, uh, yeah, good job. But there, that's me. There actually has been some theories that perhaps... The Mesmer uh, specialization might be fast casting. Fast casting slash chronomancer. Yeah. And fast casting and chronomancer kind of go because they're both time based, right? Yes. So, and uh, for people who don't know, fast casting was the primary trait for Mesmer in Guild Wars 1. Yeah. Typically, Mesmer skills, much like in Guild Wars 2, have a longer cooldown or take longer to cast. In, in Guild Wars 1, it was they took longer to cast. In Guild Wars 2, they have a longer cooldown, typically. Mm-hmm. And fast casting made you be able to do those things faster. So they kept the long cooldown with no ability to speed that up. It, quite honestly, a lot of the stuff in the Mesmer line here that they have reduced the cooldowns on, there are all things that I thought were cool, but almost never took because the cooldowns I thought were too too excessive mm. for what they were so that was illusion of life phantasmal defender although that one wasn't too bad but i would take something else because it was uh the one that re- that removed conditions and removed boons from enemies so conditions from you and boons from enemies right. i would take that one because it had a much shorter cooldown so yeah my experience with mesmer is limited to like arcane echo essentially which was the <laughs> Ability for you to put, like, four meteor showers on your bar if you had the elite echo and arcane echo and you'd echoed back to everything else. And, yeah. it was That was another theory people had, that Guild Wars 1 Mesmers could mimic the abilities of other professions. So mm-hmm. they had, like you were saying there, you could you say, you know what? I like that skill you used. I'm going to use it now. And you could just store it. And I like that one. And I can store it. And then you could just, like... I'm a mesmer, but I'm letting off Ellie skills, or I'm a mesmer and I'm letting off necromancer skills, or what have you. So that was another theory yeah. I've heard about, which has nothing to do with the balance updates. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry, we're, guys. We're, I'm segueing. We're, yeah, we're cutting off real, really, really bad from the topic here. All right. From the ranger section, heal is one. The casting time of this skill has been reduced from 1.25 seconds to one second. And now I'm wondering if perhaps this skill would, uh, you know, be. A little bit less interruptible now. Yeah. And Cal's bringing up the thought, yeah, the thief stealing, I always thought was kind of like the Mesmer's, I'm going to use your skill now. That is true. It hadn't occurred to me, but that is true. Because depending on who you steal from, it'll give you a different thing to use. Mm-hmm. That It's true. I can't believe I never thought of that. So uh, for structured player versus player, they've added a rune of scavenging, Superior Sigil of Torment, and a Sentinel am- Amulet. And I'm really excited about all of these. Those are all... I'm really excited. Want to try them? I'm going to add them all. 
There was an issue in World vs. World in, in Emerald and Sapphire Sanctums that allowed the enormous mist wrought chest to be opened without keys. And my only comment is, damn, I missed this. And uh, my comment, let's see here, I'm just going to put it in chat. So you table flipped <laughs> over the fact that you missed out on this? Yes, I did. But then the next point is that they fixed an issue with the Garnet Sanctum's enormous mist wrought chest that prevented it from opening with a key after an attempt to open it without a key. And because of like the difference between the two, I did this. <laughs> you put the table back down. Yes. <laughs> so, well, that's good. So that's, that was, I tweeted earlier today that I was just using emoticons as comments in they added Imperial Fragments to the World vs. World Jumping Puzzle Reward Chest, and pretty much nobody was asking them to. But thanks? <laughs> well, you know, I have something that will eat Imperial Fragments, and so I'm totally okay with this. This is true. Because actually I'm running out of Imperial Fragments. <laughs> I'm running out because I made, I made 19 Imperial Stars mm -hmm. before it came out to finish a monthly. And as such, I am, like, out of all of these fragments. Yeah. Well, there, there were a few changes to the Black Lion Trading Company. Uh, some new items. There's going to be a sale going on. So in case you don't really care about other things that are going on sale, uh, some things are returning and they're going to be on sale. It's changing up every day. So log in and check it out. There's the Packed Fleet Survival Pack, which is available in the special category of the Gem Store for 1,600 gems. It contains five Black Lion Claim Ticket Scraps, five Black Lion Chest Keys, five Enchanted Combat Boosts, a Home Portal Stone, a Captain Ship Air Pass. But the two-week variety. Yes. Two Revive Orbs and ten Silver Waste Shovels. A hunter had tweeted out that it was a ripoff and... Oh, I can't remember what the other term he used. And I replied to his tweet with the uh, slowly puts credit card back in wallet. And he tweeted back that he was like, I know you're partly joking, but I know you're also probably mostly not joking. And that is sad. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the return of the love struck weapons and they're available for a limited time price of two black lion tickets. And you know what? <laughs> I loved the shield, but I wasn't going to get it because I didn't have a perfect, like, I wasn't going to use it on my engineer. Right. Or even my warrior, really. But a mesmer <laughs> with a love struck shield would look pretty good. So guess what I'm going to be getting? <laughs> I figured as much. I'm wondering if these uh, end of season sales is going to be basically that all of these uh, old skins are going to take a, a lap through. Like, they have all of the Biconics weapons there for sale as well panther the kid will be happy about that he's been waiting for he's been waffling on some of the uh belinda's great sword and stuff like that for a while oh the, the great sword's not there oh. but the axe and dagger is. Oh, okay the black lion chest drops have been updated so that you could get a mini casimir mead not the bikini variety <laughs> with armor yeah i kind of wanted the bikini variety but okay right <laughs> then there is the home instant resource nodes for mithril platinum, ancient wood, ghost peppers, and orient truffles, and they have been added as very rare drops, which I like the idea, but very rare means never for me. Well, and also, does that mean in addition to, like, are the ori node drops still there and the ones they had previous? I would assume so. Okay. So it's they're adding it, not... Well, it says they've been updated. Okay. So I don't know. I'm excited about that because I love my home instance and I use it every day and I want more stuff in it. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> and the bug fix, I will go ahead and let you take away. Uh, they fixed a bug in which the outfit dies, reset, when changing outfits. So anyone who's played with me at all in the last little while will hear this in chat. Ah, my outfit reset again. Just second, I have to re-dye it. <laughs> And it happened all the time. All the time. Mm. It's actually to the point where I'm not wearing any outfits on any of my characters because it was so frustrating. <laughs> mm. That's a problem. And it's such a small problem. So I was so happy I put yay in a billion times. <laughs> and then yes. cheer. Yes. And also they fixed 
a bug in which finishers would sometimes reset to the default finisher after interaction with the hero panel. And you know what? I think I actually had that bug happen, but I didn't really think about it. Yeah. I had noticed that my finisher had reset, but I was just kind of like, oh, okay. It wasn't as irritating as apparently the outfit die reset. (laughs) Well, it was just every time. Right. Like, it's to the point I have th- three, actually, no, wait, I have it on a an envelope and three post-it notes <clears throat> in, in a grid pattern with a character mm-hmm. name and which dye colors, like pink tint, white gold, oil slick, and tarot. Okay, that's one character. The other character is midnight gold, fern, and abyss. And the other, <laughs> so like, I'm having, like, I had a notes about how I wanted to dye these things because I kept having to re-dye them so often. Wow. <laughs> notes that's okay i sent you pictures of my steno pack. that's true i don't have notes on how to make a legendary because that's not important what i have is notes on how to re-dye my armor or my outfits <laughs> yes not even armor outfits, outfits. <laughs> and Azura. So we had an email just, it came what, late last night? I think it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a fairly recent one. Good evening, ladies. I am a new Guild Wars 2 player. I have some background in WoW, but haven't played in over a year and just picked up Guild Wars 2 during its recent $10 sale along with my sister. So, yay, new player. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for a new player? How to level? Things to be on the lookout for? Is it better to spend or hoard my karma and other currency? Looks at Alona. Ah. (laughs) Apparently my (laughs) reputation precedes me. Thoughts on PvP now that both of you have dipped your toes in? I know it's a lot of questions, but found your podcast and thought I should make up for the weeks of no ask in Azura. (laughs) Thank you for taking pity on us. Also, any engineer-specific tips would rock. A new listener and Guild Wars 2 player, Zach. I'm going to go ahead and do my answer first because I can. (laughs) I would say that it's good initially, like as you're getting your karma and stuff, go ahead and use it because you're not going to get personal story rewards and you're not going to get that until level 10. So, I mean, just as soon as you get karma, start spending it and spend it to get the best gear that you can. Because it's going to be another 10 levels before you get the good rewards again. Okay. When it comes to PvP, I almost feel like unless you're an experienced PvP player in other games, you shouldn't go over to it until you're at least level 30 on the PvE side of things. Because yes, it's a very, very different experience, but it gives you some time to nail some more of the basic aspects of the game before you move into competitive game mode, where you could end up being just easily overwhelmed and frustrated and rage quit. And that's really, you don't want to have that sort of experience. You want to go to PvP and you want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Could you still make a character and go straight to PvP? Sure. It all depends on how, you know, if you want to take the, the kitty dive or the high dive. And if you're one of those people that just is always going to take the high dive, Create a character, go straight into PvP. I'm nodding. (laughs) As far as an engineer-specific tip, when I told my friend that I had made an engineer, he told me, don't even bother using your weapon. Go straight to a kit. And I was like, okay. But he's totally right. (laughs) Don't even bother using your weapon. Go straight to a kit. All right. Is it my turn? Yes. So, first of all, thanks for writing in. And I'm... Super glad that you got such a swanky deal on the game. I'm kind of jealous because I paid seven times that. (laughs) Yeah. But I've been playing it for a lot longer now. Um, So the easiest suggestion for any new player, and it's kind of cheesy, but I'm still going with it. And we've said it many times, is is to take your time. Don't feel rushed or worry that you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Said you are a leaf on the wind. Enjoy it. And I'm not going to say the next part. <laughs> um, so just take your time. Don't don't rush. Unless you really like what, rushing. But do, don't do it to the point that you feel anxious or worry that you're not doing it right. Just don't. <laughs> don't worry about that. Yeah. 
And as far as so much has changed in the leveling process since I last created a character, um, I think exploration and dynamic events are still the best options, but I'm not 100% sure. They don't hurt. <laughs> do, yeah. do them. And as far as spending karma as you go, for sure, I'm not really sure how I ended up with so much or with the aversion to spending it. It's just a thing. <laughs> I think what happened with me is I partly spent too much time smelling the roses that by the time I got to areas, the karma items were too underleveled for me. So I just didn't buy them. Right. So I think that's why I ended up with so much karma. So um, PVP has been a real surprise for me. I'm enjoying it. And honestly, it's the fastest way to do dailies. Um, If you are a pretty relaxed person and don't take being trounced too personally, I would say pop in practice unranked whenever you feel like it. Um, An additional mini tip that I think is important is if you see in map chat, which is slash M. So anything in PVP, if it's it's a light red, it's map. If it's a dark red, it's your team. So slash T is team slash M is map. If you see GLHF, that means good luck, have fun. And at the end of the match, you'll often see GG. It means good game and not good going, which is what I thought it meant initially. Like, as in, thanks for making us lose. Mm. <laughs> like, I, at first I'm like, are they being mean? I was really unsure about that. And then I realized, oh, no, they mean good game. They mean it sportingly. Yes. And so it's all good. Um, and actually, I, I had seen the GLHF in one of my earlier matches. And it, I figured out what it meant. And I was like, I really like that. So I, I try to make a habit of typing GLHF into map at the start of every match. Mm -hmm. I think it starts the match off on a friendly footing. And it really does seem to go over well. So it's a mini tip. If you pop into PvP, or if you're new to PvP, and have been playing for a long time. And as far as the NG, my NG is my lowest level character so I certainly don't have any pro tips but I'm totally going to disagree with Celeste and I love rifle on my NG love it Um, I also love the shield Um, pistol is good too um, but I I I find I find the shield fun and is interesting but I just I really like the rifle so just find your play style. I, I know grenades are the super popular choice. They're effective and it's hard to argue against them. But honestly, I can take or leave them with my play style. Am I the most effective? Probably not. But am I having fun? Yes, I am. So right. meh. Um, I do enjoy running the elixir gun. So I find, but I still find I stick to my rifle the bulk of the time. Like I don't, I don't switch away from it. I really like the rifle. <laughs> <laughs> a guy in chat room is saying that pistol number three on the ng is an overpowered blind so that's interesting to know i haven't done pistol shield in a while because i've been so happy with rifle there's so much you can do with an engineer it just depends on your personal preference and mm-hmm. for me what clicked was kits for me so. elixirs elixirs and rifle it's a, it, it's very interesting isn't it yeah. Yeah. A listener tip that was passed along uh, from Vine Seer. I heard you mention making sure listeners are caught up on Living Story in one of your previous episodes and wanted to offer some help in keeping caught up. People who don't have all of the episodes unlocked or don't want to or can't unlock them can still experience it as a guest in someone else's instance who has unlocked the episode. Any major cutscene still shows your personal character in it. So the only downfall is being unable to interact with NPCs and objects. So, very cool. And we had another one sent in. Um, And both these, by the way, were sent in-game to me. So if you ever want to send listener tips in-game, that's totally cool. I might type them in wrong. Just if message gets garbled, it's my fault. (laughs) (laughs) And the other one was from Rune Lockhart. So it says, greetings. I love the podcast. Thanks, Rune Lockhart. I have a tip for Ask and Azura. For those veterans that plan to start a Revenant but don't want the starter grind opening day, gather the following things now. And they list Tomes of Knowledge, Scrolls of Knowledge, which give you skill points, which will be very important for unlocking skills, 
writs of experience. So tomes of knowledge and writs of experience both give experience, but tomes of knowledge will give you an entire level. Writs of experience will just give you a, a bit. Mm-hmm. Exotic stat armor and weapons for your new level 80 once you used all those tomes and writs. Total makeover kits to give your revenant style. Transmutation charges for when you find your dream armor. And consumables or buffs. So, and it says re- respectfully, Rune Lockhart. So I, I think that's actually a pretty decent list of things. If you're a veteran player and, you know, you're just ready to get straight to 80. Mm-hmm. I personally would want to experience the uh, journey. But for those of you who don't really care about that, this is a really good list. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'd also say one of the things to have in there is the uh, the level 20 cheater scroll. Yes, as well. Uh, which I, the name escapes me. Scroll of experience, isn't it? I don't remember. I think, excuse me. I think it's the scroll of experience. Okay. A scroll of knowledge? Scroll of non- knowledge gives you the skill points. So a scroll of experience. Possibly. <laughs> but it's a scroll that you get that um, will allow you to advance to level 20 right away. Experience scroll. Double click to advance a character to level 20. Okay. So it's called an experience scroll. Now we know. The more you know, Jif. More. Yes. My tip this week is that there was an awesome sale on the game this past weekend that coincided with the Heart of Thrones announcement. I took advantage and bought a copy for my seven-year-old because why not? It's $10. You did? Yeah. I went ahead and got him his own account. I thought about doing it. So there you go. Go over to a starter zone and offer to show new people the ropes. Like, obviously this tip isn't for beginners, but if you're, if you've got a few level 80s lying around, you're bored, you want to go and help some new people and be inviting and welcoming and the caring community that we know we are, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. go to one of these starting areas and just run around and help people. And I mean, just check her out and say, you know, if you have any questions, you can whisper me. Mm-hmm. You do that by clicking on my name and then typing or, you know, be friendly. That's my tip. Further to that, to that, I just wanted to talk about, we give Reddit a hard time, a lot, even though we also promote some posts on there, but we do give Reddit a bit of a hard time. And this past, well, half week now, it hasn't even been a full week, Reddit has been amazing with the number of posts of new players coming in, either mm-hmm. talking about how how surprised, pleasantly surprised they've been with how their experience in the game and not the game itself. Like, yes, they're enjoying the game. They're talking about how the game's beautiful. They're really enjoying their time in it, but they're talking about how other players are making their time more enjoyable and how level eighties are going out of their way in starter zones to help people. And it's just, it's lovely to see. It's just lovely to see. And so (laughs) Reddit's been really nice this week. Surprising. Yeah, so it's either just been Heart of Thorns or new players gushing about how nice the community is. So yay! <laughs> it's been a better week. Yes. My tip is if you're being attacked by a hostile creature, which they are the ones with red names, and you either don't have time to fight it or like if you're trying to catch up with somebody or you're pretty sure it would defeat you and you're kind of in a situation where that would set you back a little bit, Uh, You can sometimes use a neutral creature, and those are the ones with yellow names, uh, to to take aggro away from you. So Mm -hmm. uh, it it does work best with ranged enemies, but it's doable with melee attackers as well. And all you have to do is get the yellow creature between you and the incoming attack that's (laughs) coming at you. And if the yellow creature is struck by the attack meant for you, it will get angry and fight the enemy chasing you. So... Yay! <laughs> it's like, <"Whoa>, <laughs> look at me go! <laughs> um, distraction. Distraction. I actually, sometimes it's fun to do that just for no real reason. <laughs> just like, I could fight this thing, but I just want to f- see which one of these two things will win. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win in a fight? Is, is it going to be Moa or Bant? Or, or Doe or Giant? <laughs> Let's find, or Etten. Doe or Etten. Let's see who will win. 
Right. So let's take bets. We should start. We should start a betting circle on, on that, and like people can get around them and take place bets on who will win. Because those does, they are tough. Right. <laughs> They're really tough. So they're mean. That's my tip. My tip is basically take a yellow creature and pull it in front of you so it takes the bullets. <laughs> Creative shielding. Yes, and then gets angry and throw it at the creature fighting you so that it will start fighting. <laughs> Tales of Tyria. So we got a lovely email from Screenager about Fustival. Uh, Non-French Fustival, so I felt easier in being able to communicate and um, (laughs) express what it's all about. (laughs) I'm sorry, but it's true. First of all, thank you for the many hours GW Reporter has saved me from long and boring train journeys. You're welcome. (laughs) We aim to please. I wanted to email you to make make you aware of Guild Wars 2 Fan Day that is happening in the UK on the 21st of March 2015. If you've not heard of Fustival before, it's our first time in the UK. Quaggins have assembled from all over Europe in previous years, and it actually has been around for a while now, so it's good stuff. And they're going to be celebrating Guild Wars 2 for a day, and they get together in real life, and it's cute. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like a mini Guild Wars 2 con. It is, yeah. It's or or meetup. More of a meetup fan day sort of celebration. As this is our first event in the UK, and we are the English-speaking arm of this European-wide fan day, he wants to let you know that you can get details at eu.fustival.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was hoping that we could promote his event and see we actually do do it if you send us an email about your event. So we can promote it. And get it out there to more people. Mm-hmm. I have seen from, I think it was Tasha Dark yes. on Twitter, was saying that it's almost like the last few days for discounted hotel rates and stuff like that. But it is happening. And if you are interested at all, go ahead and sign up as soon as possible. Yep. And it was Screenager that sent that in. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm kind of jealous that the UK and European communities are having this sort of festival and meetup all to themselves. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun to have something nice in Canada and and the U.S.? Sorry. I just was going to stop in Canada. In Canada. End of story. And the U.S. And I would like someone to pick up the torch here. I replied to Screen Andrew saying, like, that would really be awesome if we had something like this here. I'm a terrible planner. <laughs> so it shouldn't be me. But if someone in Canada wants to, or U.S. even, we can put you in touch with the people who will be able to help you do this. Yes. I'm a good helper. (laughs) We are good helpers. We're good at email. I'm good at helping, but I'm not a good planner. (laughs) So, yeah. So I want this to start over here because I think this is wonderful. It would be really awesome. So next week, we will try and host one of the giveaways for probably a shirt. And I have these really cool metallic pins, but I kind of want to save those for maybe a contest. So we'll go ahead and we'll give away some shirts or a shirt next week. If you have a community event that you would like for us to share, please send us an email. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a burning question for our Ask an Azura segment, please let us know. This is a really great question this week. I was pretty excited about it. And now's the time where we go ahead and talk about our sponsors. Our first sponsor is GoDaddy. If you are in need of a website, or storage, or any of the other services that GoDaddy has to offer, you can use the coupon code MMO30, and you'll get 30% off of your next purchase. And if you go to doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMO Reporter, they will double your RAM for a RAM BOGO. And when Celeste was at PAX, she never met up with the Doghouse System person to tell them about this genius idea of calling it a RAM BOGO. We were like ships passing in the night. It was ridiculous how many times I'd go there and she wouldn't be there. Or she'd text me and say she was there and I wasn't there. And it was insanity. Rambogo. Currently only yes. only people who listen to this show know Rambo. No Rambogo. Yeah. 
Do you know Rambogo? I know Rambogo. Have you accepted Rambogo into your heart? (laughs) (laughs) Is that taking it a bit too far? No, I loved it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm going to add that. Just right here. (laughs) Have you accepted (laughs) Rambogo into your heart? (laughs) Uh. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about our Patreon campaign. If you're in love with the show or the network, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. In the very least, it helps us to keep the metaphorical lights on. So check it out at patreon.com slash Reporter. Yes. So, Alona, if people want to find a way to contact us about anything that we talked about on the show this week, how could they do that? They can email us at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. Our Twitter is at gwreporter. Our website is guildwarsreporter.com. Voicemail is 616-666-6778. Or you can use the widget on the right-hand side of the website. Our YouTube is MMO Reporter Network. And remember to like our videos and subscribe to the GW Reporter playlist. And while you're there, poke around the channel and see what else might be there that you might want to watch. Mm-hmm. Facebook is GW Reporter. Tumblr is gwreporter.tumblr.com. And you can visit us each on Twitter. And I am at One Big Pair. And I am at Saliuki. Yes. And you can also send us messages in game. And actually, both are tips this week were sent in game so that's awesome and i am at one big pair dot one two four nine and i am saliuki dot five zero four six yeah thank you alona for doing the show with me this week really Yay. appreciate it and thank you to our chat room for being just you're beautiful comma <laughs> hashtag all the way i got comma hashtag that comma <laughs> hashtag or as slurms thought <laughs> i was gonna pound you <laughs> Are you going to pound her? Like, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'd never read it like that. I'd always read it as hashtag. And kind of opened my eyes about it. (laughs) Thank you for downloading the podcast. We hope that you come back again next week. We hope that you enjoyed the show and are super excited about Heart of Thorns. But most importantly, we hope to see you in game. just sent me sent me a message earlier take me down to revenant city where the mists are green and the armors are heavy <laughs> take me home <laughs> oh, won't you please Ridlock brimstone <laughs> oh god it's so bad it's wonderful <laughs> oh no sea cleaner i don't need to update right now please go away <laughs> right in the middle of my screen <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, I'll move along before we get too lengthy here. Although we're making pretty good time here, guys. We pretty haven't even started report from Lion's Art. We're making pretty good time here. <laughs> I'm the one that edits it. I know, we usually spend like 30 minutes on nothing. <laughs> and then uh, Colin Johansson later on in the presentation continued with, as the fleet entered the... <laughs> Thank you, phone. <laughs> Thanks, Pear. Oh, sorry. That was me. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I'm not even going to look at the text no, you, you sent to. me because I'm you busy. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> no. 
No. <laughs> Although they served that purpose well. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a little bit. So, this will make sense soon. <laughs> By the time you finish typing that, they will have understood what you oh, meant. Oh, fucker. I didn't... Ah. Copy. In the show nuts. Show nuts? In the show nuts. Yes. In the show notes. You can really feel it in the show notes. Day, so log in and <laughs> check it out. And uh, Ow, I hurt my head. <laughs> how did you hurt your head? I leaned forward and laughed and banged on the edge of the table. <laughs> and it's Sargareth's oh, fault. <laughs> Ow. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me take a sip of wine, uh, fruit juice. <laughs> The English... I'm doing a great job on this right now. <laughs> As is, this is... <laughs> you can use the coupon code MMO30 and get 30... Pro and you'll get 35... <laughs> I keep wanting to say 35. It's not 35. It's not 35. <laughs> All right. So, Ilona, if people... Not Ilona. Oh, <sighs> Alona confer confirmed? Confirmed! <laughs> Alona confirmed! <laughs> Why, well, yes, we're going to go to Alona. <laughs> it's confirmed. Yay! That's a Yay. show. Yeah. Th so that's an hour and a half show. Probably, well, probably more like an hour. 